So welcome everybody and uh, nice mm -hmm. to see you all. Um, we have on our agenda, our clerk's report from April 5th. And if you've had a chance to look it over, we can have a motion to approve. Uh, yeah, I raised uh, whatever, whatever the wording is, I put forward that we approve the minutes. And a second. second. And any discussion about that? And I don't think I, I, yeah, I, I just don't think I got anything. So I'm sorry. Okay. I think I'm getting too many emails these days. I might have to make a special one for committees. <laughs> some filters favor? or something to. But anyway. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? All in favor, sure. Sure. Okay. Any opposed? Boom. OK. <laughs> um, I don't have a Hopkins report, unfortunately. So um, committee and action item reports. Well, I got training on the website and the people on the committee, Patricia and Wayne and Sarah, um, contributed thoughts and ideas. And uh, I learned how to put those in place. And you commented, this is not public yet, but I'm kind of excited to share this draft with you. Oh, do. Oh, so if I may have a drum roll, please. Yeah, because I went there today and didn't see anything. <laughs> right. So. I I have to oh, wow. once once you folks give the go ahead, then I um, ask Jennifer to make this public. That looks great. Yep. The the um the the artwork is it critical yeah. and perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The news and announcements um, that's really good because yeah. Uh, now yep. can you remind me is. Did we put a link to that to did did did, did we link that to the so yeah. that's what happens if you click on each one? Yep. Good. Okay, and the mission statement is in the clickies on the left. Perfect. The statement is here. Yeah. Might and it be helpful to put dates by the uh, human oh, resources director, police right. chief, those visits yes. so you know it's coming right. up or has been right right that's a good idea yeah yep all right I'm, i wrote a note to myself i can i can uh, edit that i think i would put the date in front of the event yep agreed looks really good yeah this is the place that says contact info, is that just contact the town of Hadley? But I, I guess it's kind of funny, hours of operation. Right. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. It's a template. So you that's how you have to fit it in. Yeah. Right. Okay. But um, I'll see if I could put our web, our, our email on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says contact us up by email at hadleycdei at gmail.com. Oh, couldn't right. Instead of just putting it in the welcoming thing, I'll also put it in the contact info box. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's where I went. Right. Right. Add that. right. That would make it easier to find. Um, on the calendar is uh, our meetings. And if you click on that, um, great. Wow. I can even go here to remind myself. Right. <laughs> you, right gives you and the, that has the zoom link perfect oh this is fabulous so where did you get the art the art is lovely i searched for um creative commons copyright free art on google yeah beautiful, beautiful. so can you back us up so so somebody who comes to townofhadley.com whatever dot org so, yeah. how they Here's get the here. landing site right because i had to dig around yeah government boards and committees and there's us there it is okay yeah. so this is also up. something that we could ask hadley learns to post we could ask the hadley uh, grassroots facebook to post a link well the hadley grassroots facebook 
is a uh, invitation. Isn't it? Is it a closed? I believe it is. But last, last time I was in touch with them, there was no activity going on. Yeah. Maybe there is now, but. Um, hi, Mark. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. I um, think if there are other places that can have on their sites or in their business a connection to us, that would be helpful. I, I don't see how it could hurt. I wonder right. if these folks that we have been talking with, like the police chief and the superintendent of schools, might be interested in linking to us. Mm -hmm. And and in what 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 shape would that? If they if they just on their website have a place for links, they could have ours. Might, like yeah. like I put Hadley Learns on ours. Yep. Mm -hmm. And just to acknowledge that we exist. And that uh, we're considered a partner. They consider us a yeah. partner. Yep. 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 Right. You know, we could even maybe see about doing something with the library on that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Is the text that I'm seeing right in the center? So uh, this looks like text I should read because it's not familiar to me. So this oh, is this, what. This yeah. was. Um, our subcommittee, our website subcommittee, oh, developed this as an introduction, and we did send it out to the committee for comment, and we got some comments. And so, right, yeah. So Wayne wrote it, and it was revised by Sarah and Patricia and myself, and then put out. That's for great. Yep, that's great. We wanted something that was to be a, informal. a more personal, informal. Uh, invitation. That's and right. Instead of just throwing the mission statement there, you've got something mm -hmm. warm and friendly. Yeah, um, it's good. good. Yeah. You One thing I particularly I like is in this first paragraph, it kind of answers the question, how can you have a, a diversity, equity, inclusion committee that's a bunch of white people? Um, and this says we're just, we are people who are concerned and want to learn. Right. Not really, that's really good. Yep. And and the second paragraph too, in the process yep. of developing partnerships. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know who else I'd like to see as a permanent link on the left would be the historical. So is it the star? You know the um, the uh, Porter Phelps House. You know because they have that exhibit on slavery online. You know I think they would be a good uh, another good uh, okay organization to link with. Are they uh, under trustees of reservations or? No, they're not. So. Actually, no. They're on the Hadley webpage. Oh, OK. Um, we, uh, that's how I sort of came across them. Mm. So I have a question. So it says attend and take part in our monthly meetings. So we might want to be prepared if, some, prepared if somebody just shows up. Mm -hmm. What that might actually mean or look like. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I that will depend on who the person is and what their level of interest is, mm -hmm. and whether or not they want to participate or they're just mm -hmm. there to learn. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can anticipate. Uh, True. I, I just guess I'm telling myself, just be aware if somebody could show up. And so that how what we that'd be great. And yeah, yeah how, we how probably want to welcome them. Yeah. Yeah. And we should think about how we might, you know, in that moment when they're on the screen um, without scaring them off, say, you know, if you would like to reach out to us, but you're not sure, or you want to think about it, you know, here's where you can contact us, you know, because someone might say, oh, great. You know, we'd love to put you on our list. And I'd be like, whoop, nope, nope. Great. Speaking of putting people on the list or joining the committee, is there a town process by which new members need to be added? Is there a time in which that can happen? Or what would the process be if someone decided they wanted to join the committee? Oh gosh, that's in the that's in the handbook. It's pretty specific, you know, writing a letter and then being approved by the select board and all. I mean, that's what I remember when we all you know, right. we, we all were new and I never, none of us ever got a formal 
something from the select board, let alone have we been sworn in. <laughs> but right. technically, they're supposed to do all that stuff. I think Jane will be helpful there. Yeah, I think that's we could, true. Yeah. I think we can just cross that bridge when it shows up. OK, all right. <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless, no, great if we got some if we got greater racial diversity in the group. So sure. if somebody came and really appreciated, you know, the conversation, want to join, then that's why I was asking. Sure, right. sure. Has Jane been confirmed as our liaison? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's later in the agenda, but yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll, okay. Spoiler alert. Okay. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> regardless, we're a public committee, and anyone in the town has every right to attend a meeting regardless mm -hmm. of whether they're named to the committee. You don't have to be a right. member of this committee. So if mm -hmm. you're watching us on Hadley Media and you're interested, you're welcome to any meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all posted on the town website. Mm -hmm. Great. I, any, I think this is great. I, I nominate that we publish it. <laughs> just, one, just one other question where it says native land. Um, where did you get that, Kayla? That's great. Um, I have that to share with you later, but okay, it, all right, okay, okay, cool. Oh, and eventually we'll put uh, the box underneath the calendar for. Uh, there'll be the box for uh, minutes, so that people can read our old minutes at some point. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's as so urgent want, as what we we've want got. To have that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, other committees do, and if somebody did want to join, they might want to catch up on previous minutes. The other thing I would say is that um, when I spoke to Jennifer at the town hall, she recommended that we remove um, agendas and put minutes up there. And that's one way of our of us posting that. So it's always available on our mm -hmm. website on, right. on, on this. OK, I, I do feel like it would be OK to go ahead and and yeah. And I have one other question. Um, are, are there other pages possible? It, it, is, are what we seeing all that we can do? No, pretty much, yeah. OK. Well, I mean, you, but, but you can also, you can continue to burrow down, is my understanding. Yeah, that's true. The links can be not to outside websites. They can be to other things. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Joanne, was, was there something you were thinking of? It, it just occurred to me, let's say that we had an event that we want to say more about. I guess that could go under news and announcements. Um, but if there's anything more we want to say, maybe there's some, you know, Indigenous Peoples Day coming up or some, I, I was just trying to brainstorm it, I, right. you know, about, about the future, that's all. Right. Yeah. I was wondering if that was, if you they had a link to that other event details page, would that be stuck with the same template? Is every page the same template? That's what I wondered. Mm. Probably. Mm -hmm. I guess. I, uh, I can't remember because I'm working on the Board of Health one. And you can build out as many permanent links on the left side of the page as you want. Mm -hmm. Those are permanent. The stuff on the right, she had a phrase for it i don't remember but those are the things that are constantly being changed or updated so right. I, I you know and then there's like a a cabinet page where you can store things uh you know like like is it like a filing drawer you can pull it out and pop it onto thank you kayla oh i'll edit this right now wow neat and now that we have this, this may be the time to contact the uh, Gazette reporter who wanted to do a story about us mm -hmm. and include this prominently in the article so that people reading his article would be able to quickly be in touch and see what Anybody we're doing. Anybody off the top of their head remember Chief Mason's date? Uh, yeah. The Isn't it right there? The 24th. Oh, of the, you, oh, 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 six. April 26th. Right yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And superintendents. 15th of March. Yeah, that's good information. Perfect.
Yeah, that's good. See, it, now it looks like it's fresh news. Yep. Right. Good yeah. work. Yeah, it looks good too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And that news and announcements box and the one that would be for minutes or agendas, those are ones where only the three most recent items are shown. But I guess if you went, if you dug down, you would see the earlier ones. Oh, like there could be an option. I'm know, guessing that the words more, news and announcements are also a clicky to get to the longer list. No. Nope, they're not. No. Huh. How would you then see earlier ones? Uh, the calendar, maybe. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I have yeah, as long as I you put the clicky ones on the calendar. Right, as long as you now. put the yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, that's good, Kayla. So it's there. And it's got a little right. cover. Mm. Nice. Very impressive, Kayla. Yes. Thanks, team. Yeah. Good job, Kayla. Looks great. Good. It's good. Good. All right. So I'll I'll let Jennifer yeah. know tonight that we're ready to roll, ready to go public. Okay. Other uh, action items, Margaret. The HR visit. Yeah. So the HR visit is going to be May twenty fourth. Um, only because I'm not in town, and um, uh, so that will be May twenty fourth. Ed seems pretty you know, um, happy to be meeting with us. And it'll be the same format, the same sorts of questions um, that mm -hmm. we've been asking uh, of the other two uh, guest mm -hmm. speakers that we've had. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Great. And is that, is that our next meeting? Okay. Yeah. I, ha I had that down for the 10th, but I do think I got the message. Yeah, no, the you're right. That's what it was. And then right. I realized I was That's okay. Yep, that's good. Great. It's the 24th, not the 17th. Yeah, it's just right. the 24th. Okay, all right, great. Great, great, great. Great. Um, any follow-up, Patricia, or anybody else on the um, on Chief Mason's visit? It was great. Wow, did I learn a lot. I just, yeah. you know, I what I was really struck by was how I've kind of, unconsciously thought, you know, police are guys that are mean and carry guns, you know, sort of this unconscious thing. And, you know, they almost need a new name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, those are the ones that are in the news all the time. So that's yeah. why we have that impression. Yeah. yeah in and, some places and, they really and, uh, are that way. But. And I really feel his pain about finding people. And he, they, uh, he did give a specific request and that's something, you know, yeah. to ponder. Um, yeah. But I was really looking forward to that and learn learn things that I, were really important, I think, to know as a resident here. Yeah. I like that we had some, really some people from the community come who weren't members of the mm -hmm. committee. I, I didn't know who those people were, but I, they, they really showed interest. And I think yeah. one of the women is probably a therapist because she seemed to have an interest in, in mental health and police officers, maybe not, maybe it's just a personal interest, but I thought that was a very rich conversation about, you know, um, health and, and well being you know, yeah. of, of your employees, in this case, police officers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I thought it was really comprehensive and, and good and mm -hmm. um, it's an important I issue. My worry after that, my only negative thing is how long can we keep this guy? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's sort of a rising star, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's going places. And my guess is that he's not going to stay here long. Do you know well, does he's he doing doesn't a lot of good deep work while he's here? Yeah. Do you know does he doesn't live in Hadley, does he? No, he I lives in Waitley, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, so for if, it, if anybody's early. watching this on Hadley Media, um, that conversation is also on Hadley Media, and you can you can see it, and you can get to know our our police chief better. Yeah, the question I forgot to ask was how many of our police force members live in Hadley, and I I just didn't think of it while he was on, but it's yeah. been on my mind. Uh, Maybe our HR. They would know would have an, a sense about that. Yep. I My sense from just other questions I've had is that a lot of employees in, in Had, Tadley Town are not residents. Yep. Or enough that I use that word, you know, 
I certainly know that's true of the teachers. Well, housing is probably another a topic for another day, but I do know quite a few people who don't live in Hadley who'd love to live in Hadley if there were more options for housing. Hey. So, oh, yeah, you know, that, that's um, I think that's a that's one of the challenges from my perspective of, of Hadley is we have a yep. beautiful town and lots of people want to live here and the housing stock is limited. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In fact, for Hadley Learns, for the meeting on Thursday night, I've been listening to that uh, podcast called Priced Out, mm -hmm. and it's focused around Reno, Nevada, which is also having a, a big boom of people moving in, but very, very limited housing stock. And mm -hmm. you, know, you can see all, all the issues that are playing out there. You know, they're happening here, too. Yeah, it's kind of a cat and chasing the tail thing that if we had more housing stock, we would need more infrastructure and then our taxes would go up. Exactly. But right now our taxes are low, our infrastructure right. is limited. And so it's a desirable place. And so there isn't supply and demand. You know, there's, right, so the prices go up. And one of the issues we hear a lot on the planning board and, and the, uh, the uh, housing um, uh, trust is that people who want to downsize and stay in town it's they're they're being priced out right my daughter lives in the los angeles area and she and her partner have been looking for a home and um, as soon as they make an offer on one it has they have been uh, another offer has been made a hundred thousand dollars above asking price oh it's just a nightmare yeah. $50,000, $100,000, $25,000. I mean, they, they finally found one they made an offer on, but it it's huge. Snatched away from it, yeah. Huge issues. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't know how long that will take to come here or if it has come there here or what it's like other places. I'm just not in tune with that. But that was so striking to me that, mm -hmm. and that's not in Los Angeles. That's in the Los Angeles area. I um, wonder if, if, we might want to invite uh, the director of the housing authority hmm. to visit yeah. us. Yeah, I would love yeah. that. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. Anybody want to be the, the reacher outer? Uh, housing authority person. I will. Great. Thank you. Yeah. The other thing I had on our list that we had talked about and um, hadn't made a decision. I don't know if we if we have further thoughts about it. Is the um, any the building principles right? What what is that building principles? What so in other words, the, and have the elementary. Oh oh oh, gotcha. I would love to hear from them. Yeah, I, 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 I would too. I think they bring, uh, I mean, they have different issues associated with whether they're primary school or secondary uh, mm -hmm. or middle school. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think uh, Dr. McKenzie was great because we got the overall picture, but it would be nice to hear if, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, if, if there are specific issues um, mm. according to schools. I'd be I happy agree. to make that um, make that connection. Thanks, Kayla. Yeah, that's a really good idea because they're a little bit closer to in the trenches, if you know what I mean. Right. Yes, exactly. I think I think if we're going to be effective, we need to have as much knowledge about what's going on yeah. in, in the town as we can get. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Before we can make any helpful recommendations and right. see where we fit, right? You know, what the needs are. Yeah. So I, I hardly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because every time I read about, you know, here's what's happening in Amherst, here's what's happening in Nevada, here's what's happening in, you know, the Midwest or whatever. I'm always thinking, okay, I wonder how this plays out in Hadley. You know, what are the proportions in Hadley? What are the numbers in Hadley? What are the percentages mm -hmm. in Hadley? Mm -hmm. You know, well, that some of that we got in the first round. Uh, our, our member, our teacher member who doesn't live in Hadley but is on the committee sent, uh, sent us a link to the, the uh, statistics about that. Right. So we could yeah. see, uh, mm -hmm. and they're still around somewhere in my notes, but. Right. Sure yeah. I still have right. that link somewhere. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, but like for instance, listening to this uh, priced out uh, podcast, one of the things they talk about is that the predominant number, you know, what's the, the household size, the predominant household size in the area is one or two people. Mm-hmm. And yet most of the housing stock is for families with kids. Mm-hmm. And then they talk about the challenges of building new housing stock specifically for one and two person households. And of course there, not only is land an issue, but water is too. So that makes me think, okay, well, so what's the proportion here in Hadley? You know, you drive up and down in Hadley, it's like, it's all family homes. It's family, 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 house, 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 house. Now you don't know are unrelated people, you know, it might be a student rental with four or five unrelated people living in it and just still mm-hmm. look like a family home. But I, I know now, Mark, you're, you're, you're Mark is on the planning board. And yeah. I regularly talk to a member of the flaming planning board because we jog by his house and he'll stop us. And he was just, and this is Joe Zagrodnik. Mm. And he was discussing how there's, I guess every town has to have a minimum of, uh, uh, Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but 10% affordable housing and Hadley mm. has 13. <laughs> and that Amherst and South Hadley towns around have like eight. So they're below. Right. And I, and I said, and then him, what? Well, well, I just, and then, and then I asked, where is it? And there was the whole housing area that I didn't even know existed. There's three different areas. But then I said to him, you know, I live kind of close to UMass and there are a lot of houses that have students in them. Do we know how many? And he, he said, I don't. I mean, my neighbor across the street has, a, my house is a large, like built for like a family with three kids size house as is all the houses on the street pretty much and my neighbor across the street she's renting two rooms to some UMass grad students and around here right what's that what is your street I live on High Meadow Road and that is a street fair it's it's probably about this development is about 25 years old and it's off of North Maple Street and North Maple Street Lots of those houses, you can tell they have students because the parties this time of year, you start seeing who's. (laughs) um, Well, just the number of cars parked in the yard. What's that? Yeah. Just the number of cars parked in the yard. Right. And so we got to talking about how the interesting situation with Hadley, that there's there's zoning for keeping the, the, the master plan wants to keep a lot of farmland, open space, natural beauty and that most of the commercial is all around Route 9, and, and that you know they're, they're, there's not an in-between, and yet there's all these students. But I will tell you as a business owner, I have uh, maybe can think of one time I ever had an employee who actually lived here, and most of them said, I can't find a place to live. And yet most of my friends I know live here, but they don't work here. And it's just kind of, I grew up in a tiny town where everyone who lived there worked there. <laughs> You know, this was years ago. It's not true now with, you know, transportation, but uh, this is a really desirable place. And I know loads of people that are work at UMass that live here. And why right. not? <laughs> the taxes are lower, right? Mm-hmm. Among other things. Yeah. Right. Margaret, you had something that you wanted to yeah, go ahead. say or ask. Margaret? I remember now. I, I, I would like to go back to, you know, the percent of, of affordable housing that, you know, Hadley supposedly has more than it's supposed to of affordable housing. And that's another one of the items that was in that priced out uh, podcast that uh, there's a certain percentage of affordable housing in the area that they're covering. And the need for it is like somewhere between seven and 10 times that's right that amount. And the set up with the rules and the funding and the da 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 you know they can build like 40 more units a year if they're lucky and they need literally they need 10 times they need hundreds more and i want again that was another thing was like oh so houses in hadley you know yeah we have this certain percentage that we're required to have but is it actually enough 
you know, because very often these kind of rules are made at, at one time when it is the right amount. And then 10, 20, 30, 40 years later, it's way out of touch with reality. Right. And, you know, I mean, if that rule was made 10 years ago, it's out of date. If it was made 20 years ago, it's out of, it's way out of date. If it was made in the 70s, oh my God, you know, because wages have stagnated since the 70s. Mm -hmm. And prices have just gone up and up and up and up. So anybody on a fixed income who's elderly or disabled, anybody stuck on minimum wage, mm -hmm. yep. priced out. Mark, jump in. I'm, I'm trying to use my, my raise hand so I don't speak over someone because I think we spoke over Margaret and she lost her, her thought earlier. Um, so I, yeah, it's more complex than I can um, grasp everything, but in a, from a simple elevator speech on it, um, when we talk about affordable housing, uh, what's regulated, that's, you know, what the state calls affordable housing. And we do have, um, we have the, um, there's, I think, three different areas. There's the area, uh, I think there's some housing back behind where the Pizza Hut used to be down in Route yeah. 9. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a housing complex on the other side of Route 9 there. Greenleaf. Um, actually, there's two. I think one's Hadley and one's Amherst. Yeah. Um, and then there's, uh, there's Golden Court, which is, uh, I think it, it's a different, I think that might be state, either state subsidized or state owned. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but that's, that's one thing. And, and, and that's the thing that, that Joe often talks about. Um, and there are statistics on that because that's tracked at the state level. And we are above the required. We're at 13%. And a lot of our neighboring towns are at 2%, 3%, you know, four, you know, who's holding their hands to the fire. So that's, that's, that's the soapbox that Joe often brings up when someone complains. Now, I think there's also, when people talk about affordable housing, they're talking about the next grade up, which is not the people that need to go to state subsidized housing exactly. or rent control, but you just want to buy a reasonable house. And that's what, I don't know how we intervene on that. That's again, that's market supply and demand. And I don't know, but I suspect that as families age out, over the, over the generations and the kids have moved on and work elsewhere and mom and dad's house in, in Hadley, you know, I, I don't know how many sell and how many side, oh, well, let's turn it into a, you know, rent generator because there's such a demand for the academia, you know, at the five college system. So, and that has, that's a double-edged sword, you know, um, Joe and anyone on, on the board will talk about the term student stuffers. And, um, you know, it's good for someone, someone getting rent, but it has other issues that I'm sure um, Chief Mason could talk about and um, mm -hmm. neighbors could talk about parties and uh, things like that. And not not every student stuffer house is a bunch of wild party animals. I, I, I don't wanna say that either. You know, there's a lot of grad students who are responsible. Mm -hmm. Very quiet, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's complex. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. The, sorry. What is the process for uh, a person building affordable housing? What are the rules about that in Hadley? Mm -hmm. well, are there questions about, for the Hadley Housing Authority? Yeah. I'll write that down, Wayne. I'll ask that question. Yeah. And are there rules limiting how many people can be rented to in a house? Are there, uh, mm. if, if I say I'm gonna move out of my house and I wanna rent it to students, can I do that without getting any approval from anybody? What is that process? I, I, th I think you have to have it zoned for that, yeah. And, and, and I don't know how many mm. are grandfathered, but I know that now if you wanna break it into a, you know, from a single family to a multifamily, there are zoning, you know, rules that you need to go through if you're going to do it legally and request it, as opposed to just going ahead and trying to 
get away with it until someone realizes that you have 12 cars at your house. <laughs> yeah, there's some unrelated persons regulations in different places. Mm. You can only have so many unrelated persons in a dwelling. I don't know if that's city or town wide, but I know that from Boston and my work in student affairs. I'll ask that too, Wayne. Mm -hmm. Margaret had her hand up. Margaret. I was just going to say what Pat said um, that I, I know having lived in Amherst, there was a, a limit on the number of people, but whether that's enforceable or how that gets enforced, uh, that's an entirely different matter. I will say um, that I have a close friend who lived on a cut through street in Amherst uh, that used to be all owner occupied and that eventually pretty much maybe all of them but one other person sold uh, and they've all become rentals and it's a, an enormous party street now and um, yeah so I, I mean you know there are there are the, the, there can be some terrible downside to to that but Pat's going to ask I think that's a great these are great questions to ask. And there's also, um, I'm not overstepping anyone, there's also, I know that um, Molly Keegan and uh, Dylan and some other folks have, um, I think maybe Mark Howard, I'm not sure, are, are on a, uh, they've started a housing committee in town. Um, mm. They would be interest, you know, an interesting group to invite. Great. Yeah, Mark. Um, can you, you say how they've started a housing committee? This is a new, uh, can you fill no, us? No, it's, uh, um, what is their committee? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on it right now. I've had a bad week with my daughter's car and stuff. I'm, I'm a little scattered, but um, they were the ones that um, put forth the idea to get the funding for uh, rental oh, assistance right. dur during COVID. And they um, they really were shocked. trying they were trying to get it voted on at the uh, fall town meeting when they were as our planning board issues were toward the end of the agenda and too many people left when it got cold I and remember. we lost quorum. So then they, um, they they didn't want it to slide six months. So then they asked around and checked and they came to us as the affordable um, housing trust that. The, um, the planning board and a select board member are the custodians of this, this uh, affordable housing trust, which was basically generated as we have, um, we have cash that is an option for, I mean, well, for example, um, East, the East Commons project, um, Barry uh, Roberts, the developer was required to build a certain number of um, affordable units, or he could pay into the affordable housing right. trust if he wasn't going to build those. So that's what he did. So we had, right. I don't know, maybe roughly two, three hundred thousand dollars that was sitting in in escrow until we set up this trust. And uh, the first transaction we've had was to support this rental assist. Right. So. Hmm. Oh, I'm so glad that was able to, to be done because I remember being at that town meeting and being so disappointed. And, right. and then I you know, had another occasion to look up the earlier town meeting where we voted in for that, you know, the trustees for that fund. And I'm really glad we did that. I'm actually seeing the article in the Gazette here on uh, it dated December 10th, 2020 about what you're talking about, Mark. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Just to decide, when is the next town meeting? The date? May 22nd. Uh, May 22nd, May 22nd. 22nd. yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm going to move uh, us forward. Um, please. Mark, go ahead. I just want to add that that's an important meeting to go to because everything that happens in terms of the budget getting approved, all of that sort of thing, if there are only, you know, uh, hundred and some odd people who show up, they decide what happens for the rest of the town. So mm -hmm. it's worth, very much worth going out and support. 
Right. Don't complain if you don't use your vote. True. Right. So the um, one item of old business on our agenda was looking at um, other communities. And I just wondered if anybody had anything to report back about that, if there's anything that you think would be great for us to look at. Yeah, Marg. Um, so I, I don't know if I got this info from someone else, but um, about checking out Acton. Um, but Acton, actually, they have a, a DEI committee that seems to be time sort of limited because they said, you know, they had one year in which to present their findings to the select board. And then I think they met and, and I think the goal it said was then and then it would sort of the committee would end one month after that meeting, mm. which was sort of interesting yeah. to me. But what I really enjoyed about that Acton group was yeah. that they had a questionnaire that I thought, so I took the questionnaire. That was the only way I could actually write down all the questions. Oh, um, good idea. And so I, I thought it was pretty interesting. And I, at some point, maybe when we meet in person or whatever, uh, or I mean, I can, I'll type out those questions and their responses and send it around because I thought that would be a great way to gather information. But the problem with that is, again, it's only accessible for those with a computer. So I think if we had copies made up and maybe had it at the senior center or at the library or uh, town hall or, because we don't have the funds ourselves to do a mass mailing. But I just wanted to mention that there's this tool out there that, that can perhaps be used. Mm -hmm. Thank you like that. Wait. Is it important enough that we should, we could ask the select board to do that kind of mailing? To gather information? So there, you know, there, what are there about 5,200 residents, but I don't know how many households there are. Oh, good question. So, um, you know, then, then that would be, that would be one way to do it. Um, and I also think that, I mean, I think if people, if you're gonna ask people to send it back, it's it's almost like it's gotta be in a self-addressed stamped envelope. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm not sure, but let's say, I don't know, Mark, do you have any idea of how many? Yeah, I was gonna ask that too. Houses how, many, how many households? I, I don't know. I was, I was just doing the math in my head. I don't know by fact, I'm I just- think I'm that guessing, might be might, might be, be a list that could be gotten from the post office from I'm the guessing, um, yeah, but I'm mm -hmm. guessing it's between fifteen hundred and two thousand mm -hmm. just by just by guessing the average number of mm -hmm. people per household. Mm -hmm. So let's just say it's uh, you know a thousand. So if it's and and I know a stamp is more than fifty cents. I mean I, I'm not sure what you know. So so. If you're sending out a thousand and you're doing so well, there's a discount for bulk mail, but yeah. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So there is not in the Hadley records uh, a record of how many households there are in our town. There is a may I speak on that? Mm -hmm. There there is a um, you can buy uh, at the town hall a street directory and they list everyone's name, address, occupation, and it's done by street or it's done by name. So their, mm. you know, their booklet contains both ends. So if you just know someone's name, you can look it up, find out the street they live on, or, you know, um, so that's one way. It's a tedious way, obviously, because no one wants to sit there and count all that. But there's probably something out there where the tax collector probably knows how many. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, it's, I'm sure the information's out there. It's just knowing where to find it. And I, I would start mm -hmm. with uh, Molly and Dylan's group. That, that might be something that they, you know, some of the data that they've gathered. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, under new business, uh, you were asking about oh, native land. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret. Yeah, I'm sorry. Was there, is there anyone else who has anything they want to say about what they found? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so I'll share this website that I linked on our website. And honestly, I cannot remember where I came across this, um, but it's a map. It's a map of the world, but you can narrow down to your region of the world and you can learn who the, uh, the First Nations were in that region. Wow. And those colors all mean something? Yeah. They're different nations. <laughs> there you go. Narragansett, so Pequot, mm -hmm. part of the world. We see that the First Nations here, mm. I'm going to say that we, we're somewhere around here. I'm not sure exactly where, but there's oh. the Connecticut River. Yep. So we're living in the home of the Pocumtuck and Nipmuc Nations. Right. Um, so that's the Native Land website. Nice. The link nice. Um, the next item was Zoom protocols. And I would just say that if you uh, if you ever have questions or have a hard time finding in our emails, the links for our meetings, they're always on the town website. And that's the that's the purpose of well, that's part of the process of getting these meetings um, published is that they're posted on the website and you can go there and like like on ours and ours will ours will once it's published do the same thing you can just you can locate the links there. Um, the other Zoom protocol, um, I wasn't sure if everybody was familiar with the reactions that Mark was using. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, you probably see reactions. If you and don't see reactions, it, you'll see oh. three dots. Oh. You can clap for somebody, give them the thumbs up, show them a little love. You can raise your hand. And you can raise your hand. And you can oh. lower your hand. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I love um, that Mark was using that as a way because Zoom is so awkward to know when, you know, when when somebody's come to the end of a sentence. So I think that's a great protocol. Thank you. Um, that we can try. Um, I have a hard enough time in person. <laughs> Um, a refresher about the open meeting laws and our communication. We need to make sure that um, we don't email the full group about items for discussion. We can't do that. Um, and and even as the clerk or the co-chairs, we can't email the full group about items of discussion. We can say, here's an agenda or let me know what you think about this, but we can't initiate a conversation online in any in any way among our full committee. So you got confirmation of that? Yep. Yep. That was that was confirmed to us earlier. We cannot have anything that smacks of a meeting that is not publicly available. Yeah. Right. Um, I wanted to make a I'm sorry, Margaret. Except for subcommittees. Yeah, subcommittees, that's that's kosher, yeah. I wanted to make a request that uh, on our email threads that we be um, alert to the subject because we're, we have a lot of stuff going back and forth. So if the subject, if we have a subject header that's like April 5th meeting minutes and then somebody says, oh yeah, but isn't our next, blah, then all of a sudden, then it becomes very hard to find that other information. Hard to search, so, yeah. Um, and I'm I'm not pointing blame. I'm I'm absolutely involved in doing that. But if we can tune into subject headings on emails, I know it will make everybody's life easier when we try to find find things because we we've generated a lot, which is great. Yep. Um, Next, we have open agenda. The, the item that I have for open agenda is that Jane is officially our liaison. 
And uh, if anybody else has items for open agenda. Mark. Actually, I'm gonna give Joanne the floor. Joanne? For what? I thought you had your hand up. No, thank you, thanks. Um, but uh, I, I, we did we skip over the Eric Carl Museum visit? Oh. That's the only thing I wanted to. Thank you. I, somehow that got lost from my list. Thank you. Sarah's hand is up. Go, Sarah. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, because my phone rang. Um, I just want to make sure everybody knows that this Thursday is the Hadley Learns second meeting on housing. And if you didn't already get that email, I can forward you the one that I just got today. Do you know if that's going to be recorded? Because I may be spending the whole day in the car driving to New Jersey to pick up my daughter's car with its new transmission. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I do not know that. I, I will ask. Because I know I, there was a housing um, seminar going on Thursday, like 1 to 2.30 that the PDPC sent out. And I was like, oh, but then they said in the email, this will be recorded. So if you can't watch it during work hours, you can, you know, mm -hmm. so that would, hopefully it's mm -hmm. doesn't let you be interactive, but at least you can follow it. Right. I know they like to do breakout groups, so I don't know how those get ready. Margaret. Patricia, Patricia has a hand raised. Um, I just want to clarify that I'm going to find out or you're going to tell me who the housing authority director is, and I'm going to reach out to that person and invite the person to come to a future meeting on a Monday at 515. Is that what we agreed on? I believe the housing authority is under the auspices of Amherst now. I don't think we have a director anymore, but I could be wrong. I think you're right because I think I Googled Hadley Housing Authority and got that page and we've it has had, the names. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've had a troubled history with ours and the Golden Court community and issues there. And I think whoever was just um, got tired of it. And so it went to the Amherst has been, Amherst helps us out. I don't know if you knew, they, they also uh, deliver all of our mail through their post office. So mm -hmm. yeah. we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't get too uppity with Amherst. <laughs> we need them. <laughs> Can we go back to Margaret's question about Eric Carl? Yeah. Yes, that is, um, three of us are going this Friday morning, uh, I think, is it 11 to 12? Or 10.30 maybe? It could be 10.30 to 11.30, yeah, something like that. I think our our tickets get us in at 10 when they open. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we scheduled a particular time with Ellen. Um, and that would be uh, Patricia, Joanne, and myself. And I can tell you the exact time I have it in my... Wayne. Yeah, I think it's uh, There is a website for the Hadley Housing Authority uh, and an address, 42 Golden Court, and phone numbers. Right. But the, if you go to the website and look for the director, um, it's being um, administrated by the Hadley Housing Authority is under the auspices of the administrator of the Amherst. Um, right. Would that be commissioners? I don't know. The Board of Commissioners is made of four members elected by the residents of Hadley and one member appointed by the governor. Uh, meetings are held a second Wednesday in the community building of 42 Golden Court. Wilfred Danilico is the chair. Mark. Oh, or oh, or he was. Go ahead, Mark. Um, it's my understanding that uh, the woman who's doing it is actually overseeing Belchertown, Amherst, and Hadley. Um, 
and I think she, uh, I think her name is on the Belchertown website. Good luck, Pat. Okay, do we have some Mondays that we think are not good? The 31st. 31st is the holiday, right? Right. Okay. All right. So can we go into June? Is that all right? Yes. Fine with me. I think we had a couple meetings. Um, on my calendar, I have the 21st marked at a possible time for a speaker. Is that right? 21st of May. 21st of June. June. I have DEA meeting on the 7th, and then I have DEA meeting on the 21st. Was that one of the dates we held for a speaker? I don't know. Could I be. I, I just want to get together with myself and think about DEI issues that day. I don't know. I wrote it down <laughs> on my calendar. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't have anything on my calendar for that. I know that Wayne and I are away that week. Okay, so that's not good. 21st. Okay. 14th of June. Is Flag Day, it's not, it's not a local holiday or anything, is it? I don't think so. That's the 14th, yeah. Oh, should we try to do something, uh, observe June, Juneteenth? Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing, Mark, oh, which wow. is uh, Saturday, June 19th. I was, um, I was walking somewhere on, I don't know if it's on campus or somewhere, and somebody said something about, oh yeah, and someone said something about Juneteenth, and this guy said, what's that? And I almost turned around and said, that was when Texas, the last state to be, to abolish slavery, you know, abolished it, so. Um, if I could just go backwards, I did confirm with my email with Ellen that we are, this Friday from 11 to noon, is when she's expecting our tour. That doesn't mean we can't get there early and kind of wander around because our registration gets us in at 10, but we're, she's expecting us from 11 till 12. And, and Mark, did you, did you put my name off? Because I'm at work then. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I said Joan, uh, Joanne. I, I meant Sarah. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, okay. Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> I, no, I'm not cancel culturing you or anything. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> So um, do we want to take a few minutes and think, I mean, it's very short notice, but is there any way that we want to uh, amplify or uh, celebrate or acknowledge Juneteenth, Mark? I, I'm just thinking this might be a great opportunity to ask Ada. I mean, I don't know if, what her schedule's like right now, but maybe the Hopkins students would have some great ideas that we could collaborate with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think are they at a school. Oh, sorry, Margaret. That's no, okay. Go ahead. Is that is when does school end? For me, it ends the sixteenth. I'm not sure okay. when it ends in Hadley. Yeah, Margaret. I would like uh, maybe to pair up with the library on this because they've been fairly uh. thinking, and they might have something already planned I, I don't know mm. but i'd also like to see something on our website that shows that we are honoring it yeah i can i can certainly if it i can certainly put up a statement or if somebody else wanted to draft a statement i can put it up um, I'm happy to work with anyone on it kayla if you and i want to work on it or anyone else wants to work on it i'm happy to do that at some point uh, anybody want to connect with the library and see if there's any way we can collaborate in an observation? Why don't I work with you, Margaret? Uh, Kayla's doing all this work on the website and, and other stuff. So why don't we get together and check out the library and check out other places sure. and come back to the committee with uh, information? Yeah, I'm sure there's there's amorous groups that have to be observing this too. So it might be something we support. I've been to one of theirs before. And Wayne, you and I are, are hitting the road on Juneteenth. Yep. But we can still acknowledge it on our site. Yes. It looks like it's a state holiday this year. It was recognized as a state holiday last year. So this is the first year it'll be, a, it's recognized as a Massachusetts state holiday. Wow. 
Okay, cool. I could imagine just inviting people to show up on the town common for a quiet moment at a certain time or something. I mean, that's simple and uh, so, so, um, yeah, Mark. So I, I will credit my partner here who is sitting behind me getting ready for her own Zoom. But she said, how about the select board uh, maybe coming up with a statement? Yeah. Good luck. Who said that? <laughs> no, I think that's, that's something we can ask Jane about. That would carry mm -hmm. some weight. That would be nice. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, then Wayne and I will, um, you know, shoot and I, I can shoot an email off to Jane, uh, asking her about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you know, not the, I'm sorry, if not the select board, I'll bet Chief Mason. He's so, you know, proactive. I bet he would, you know, to somehow support in any way he could. You know, even though it's rather short notice. Actually, I would like to see him write a statement. I think he's just, he's so great. Not, mm -hmm. not necessarily about Juneteenth, but I mean, about uh, um, the town of Hadley and, and the stuff that they are doing. And we could post that on our page Ooh. as well, but I don't want to burden him. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Last uh, last calls for other open agenda items. That's interesting stuff. Mm. Yeah, Pat. Um, a while ago, I had sent, I think to everyone, um, a statement on the different terms that are in our committee name. I found it on a website. And I wondered if we're beyond the point of really talking about what each of those words means and even considering putting that language on our website you know what what does diversity actually mean C come up with some definitions of the terms maybe start with something and then talk about it margaret go um the town of acton did just that oh did they oh great we might be able to just if we like it use it i can i I'll, i will pull that out and i'll send it around i will mm -hmm. Um, type up the questions that they had on their questionnaire, send that to everyone so that we won't have a discussion about it. <laughs> Email, so we can gather together again. And uh, that'd so, be uh, great to put on our next agenda. Mm -hmm. I'll make mm -hmm. a note of it. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a, a meeting with HR Director Ed O'Connor on our calendar for May 24th. And then our next business meeting will be June 7th. And uh, looking at perhaps bringing some guests or a guest in June. Great, that's it. Do we have a motion to adjourn? From Wayne, thank you. A second. Sarah and Margaret, great. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Yay, team. Thank you to, co to the co-chairs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Lovely. Very nice meeting. I'll yeah. see some of you on Thursday, probably. Yes. Awesome. Looking okay. forward to it. Yep. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.